Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our inaugural podcast of Seekers of the Supernatural. And I'm your host, Tony Spera, along with Dan Rivera, Chris Galoran, and Wade Kirby. Now, we know that you guys are excited for us, but we're excited for you, too, because we have a lot of information that we're going to impart to you over the coming weeks. And I want to start out with New England Society for Psychic Research. What exactly was that? How did it get started? Well, it started in 1952 by Ed Bourne and Lorraine Warren, famous ghost hunters, as you know. I'm their son-in-law, Tony Spera, and I'm married to Ed and Lorraine Warren's daughter, Judy, and have been married to her since 1986, though I met Ed and Lorraine back in 1979 at Jorgensen Auditorium at University of Connecticut. From the moment I watched that presentation back in 1979 as a young man, I was intrigued by what Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren were saying on that stage. I never ever in my life heard stories such as that about ghosts, devils, demons, witchcraft, black witchcrafts, Satanism. And when I heard that, I immediately said to myself, I got to talk more to Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. And luckily, we went back to the green room after the show and Ed invited Judy, of course, his daughter, and me uh, to a pizza place in Storrs, Connecticut. Now, it's amazing that a place was even open at that late hour, but we found one. And, and that's how it all started. I started to ask Ed immediately, like a novice, you know. I went, Ed, do you really believe in ghosts? And he laughed. He was kid, if you saw what I saw, I'd stop your heart. And from that moment on, I was intrigued by everything that Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren had said. That's why I learned my craft. And of course, my team that I assembled uh, includes Dan Rivera, Chris Galoran, Wade Kirby, and others that we have on the team. But the lead, senior lead investigator is Dan Rivera. The lead investigator is Chris Galoran. And the regular investigator to our newest addition to our team is Wade Kirby, who, in fact, knew Ed and Lorraine back in the 80s. And he has a long story about that, but we're not going to get into that right now. But he was friends with Ed and Lorraine back in the 80s also. So we're happy you're here. We want to make this a fun and enjoyable podcast. But we also want to make it an educational podcast. We don't want to just, just talk away and, and try to be funny. We're going to do that. But we're also going to educate as many people as we possibly can. And as I said on my podcast yesterday, uh, with the guys, that we don't know all the answers. Of course we don't know all the answers. No one knows all the answers to everything, and this is no exception to paranormal realm. Uh, but we're learning daily. We know a lot, but we don't know everything. And our goal is to exude positivity to the audience. Uh, we're not going to speak negatively about anyone or anything. Everybody has the right to investigate and do things the way they see fit. So what I'm going to do now, though, is turn this over so each member of our team during this podcast can talk about themselves, give you a little intro about themselves. First, I'm going to start with you, Dan, because you're the lead senior investigator, and you created this podcast from scratch. So go right ahead, Dan. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Dan Rivera. I'm uh, NASBR senior lead investigator and uh, co-owner of TCD Paracon Entertainment. And... Uh, I got together with Rob and uh, we decided to do this podcast and um, yes, bring back Seekers of the Supernatural, something that Tony has started back in the 90s. It was right. a simple um, you know, public access, public access uh, TV show with Ed and Lorraine Warren. So today's day, we, you know, we have podcast and um, I wanted to bring that back, you know, into the light of uh, what Tony has started many years ago. So here we are. Um, we're here with the team, uh, Chris Lauren, Tony, and Wade. And uh, we're here to do a good show and uh, give you guys uh, something to uh, look forward to um, with our events that we're going to be announcing. Um, you know, our, our Paracon, our celebrities that are going to be at the Paracon, vendors and all that, and uh, other events that we're doing with uh, Get Haunted. Uh, we're doing the Missouri State Prison which uh, that's June 1st, I believe, and that's coming up soon. So That's the haunted, that's the uh, Devils on the Run Tour, right? That's the Devils on the Run Tour, right? So what's going to what's gonna happen there, Dan? Well, we bring some items from the museum. Um, we're bringing the Shadow Doll. We're bringing Peggy the Doll, the coffin. Um, we're bringing the Satanic Skull. 
um, many other objects oh, from yeah. the Warren's Museum. The only thing that's not common is uh, movie, Annabelle. Yeah. The movie Annabelle doll probably be there, right? The movie Annabelle doll will definitely be there. Yeah. But uh, right. there's going to be more. Um, and, you know, some of them are going to be a surprise, as well as um, we're heading down to Texas at the Black Swan Inn. That will be the weekend of what the eighteenth, I believe. Uh, I gotta look, but yeah, that sounds about in right. June? Is it in June, in, right? Or in May? May. In May, yeah, yeah, yeah. May, May eighteenth. So uh yeah, so we're gonna post links for that for ticket sales as well. Uh, I believe that's three quarters of the way sold out already. Yeah, that's selling out. That's selling out really fast. With yeah. Ryan Buell. San Antonio. Right, yeah. Ryan Buell will be down there, San Antonio. What's that called? What's the event called? That's the uh Black Swan in I think it's a psychic uh, medium fear or something like that. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll get yeah. more information too. Right. You know, about it. So, Anything else, Dan, you want to add? Uh, I'm good right now. I mean, we could turn it over, over to Chris. I'm going to over to Chris Gowarn. Chris? Uh, you guys don't want to hear about me. Yes, we um, <laughs> yeah, I've just been with the team for about 12 years. Uh, you guys really don't want to hear about me, so I'm not going to waste our time. Uh, we do want to hear about you. you Come see, on. He's very shy. He, he, uh, he's the skeptic, which is essential for a good team. But he's not a total skeptic. No, no, no. But no. he looks with a skeptical eye. Right, right. Uh, Why does he do that? Because he was brought up that way as a police officer. He looked for reasons why things happened other than just somebody telling him this is what's going on. They want evidence. So that's what, another reason Chris is on the team, right, Chris? Well, that, yeah, that's right. That's what, That's why I'm with the team. But uh, seriously, though, uh I'm looking forward to interacting with you guys and uh, having a good time. I'm going to bring some fun to this because these guys are lame as hell. Hey, thanks so, a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to line it up. Wade, what do you got to say? Uh, to Wade Kirby. Thank you, Tony. Um, I met Ed and Lorraine back in 87 uh, when I had a, a case on my own and, uh, and, and didn't know what to do. And back then there was no internet. So um, I no, or, uh, could only go through the phone book. So I was introduced to them. They changed my life. And Mr. and Ms. Warren taught me how to clear homes. I did it on my own for about 25 years. And um, uh, now I'm the uh, caretaker of the home and took care of Lorraine's pets after she passed. And um, here we are with the team. And Wade, though, Wade is very good at photography. Uh, his camera work is astounding. And Thank so you. we we have Wade come with us on all the cases, uh, and because he's very very knowledgeable in the occult, he taught he's taught me things that I didn't know. So it's just what it's all about, folks. It's about interacting and learning through each other, not trying to lecture others. We're not here to tell you our way is the only way or the highway. We're telling you how Ed Lorraine Warren investigated the paranormal realm, and how we're continuing on that tradition, and it's a faith based. Uh, approach because when you watch these television programs uh, all these different paranormal programs I'm not going to mention any names they never bring closure to the families they'll tell the family you know you got a devil here you have something satanic here uh, yeah I saw that move yeah you should be scared and then they leave and they never resolve it the people are still frightened uh, they have they're, they're going through trauma and they haven't resolved anything. It's like a police officer, and Chris could tell you, going to a burglary scene, and he walks in the house and he goes, what happened? And they go, well, you know, we stole, they stole the TV, the checkbook. And he looks around, he goes, yeah, you're right, the TV's missing. Oh, yeah, the checkbook's missing. Too bad. And he goes and writes up a report, puts it in his briefcase, and just puts it in a file, doesn't give it to the detectives, doesn't try to find out what happened, doesn't interview the neighbors. He just lets it go. That's what a lot of these paranormal groups do. They just let it go. And that's not helping. All that, that might be helping the paranormal investigators see things and learn some things, but it doesn't help the family that you got called in to help. So, you know, that's that's the that's a problem. And so our thing is when we go in to investigate a home, we go in with a very serious attitude. It's we don't go in automatically believing the people. That's that's key. You can't automatically. That's why we got Chris here. That's why we, we have Wade. People are experienced. When they go in, they speak to a person. They would know within 10, 15 minutes if this person or this family is making up a story or telling you the truth, because it's how their responses are. Like I remember one time Ed told me, he said to me, he goes, you know, I've got these phone calls sometimes from people, and after about two minutes, I determined that the person was full of it. I go, what do you mean, Ed? What are you talking about? And what he said to me stuck 
stuck to me. He said, you know, if somebody calls me up on the phone, because I had one guy call me up on the phone all scared and everything, about like two in the morning, and he's saying, yeah, Mr. Warren, this big ugly creature was crawling on top of me, and he had green teeth, red eyes, and he was drooling. And Ed said to the guy, well, what did you do? What, what happened? What did you do? Well, I just closed my eyes and, and then went back to sleep, and I was scared. How many people you know would just close their eyes and go back to sleep? sleep? Right. So they're full of it. They're just making up a story to see Ed's response, maybe to see if Ed will, will, will buy it. And if Ed bought that story, then the guy would go out and say, these guys are frauds. They don't know what's true from not true. Right. So, so those are the things that we look for. We look for consistency. We look for the right kind of answers. Yes, Chris? I know, uh, you know, before Dan and I uh, even uh, became part of Nesper, we, we worked together for, uh, for I don't know, four or five years. Maybe, yeah, it was maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that. Maybe longer than that. And uh, we, I don't know how many times we went into a house. We, I mean, we connected, me and Dan connected pretty uh, uh, quickly, quickly together. We, we, we work well uh, with each other. And nothing is worse than going to some place. And in 15 minutes, like you said, we're talking to somebody and we're sitting there with the whole family and they're, you know, they're into it. And, and they tell us something. We're looking at each other like, ah, yep. uh, how are we going to, I mean, this is all BS. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing worse than that. And then, you know, you're going to have to spend the whole night just to, you know, satisfy the, um, the client, the client. So they're not, you know, um, I was going to say, did you ever right. like, Tell them they're bullshit. Uh, we have. Uh, there's but, some that we, sometimes we, you just got to break. Some of them that you know you got to be professional about it. And um, right, right. A lot of times what Ed would you do is walk Lorraine, away at a certain point. Ed and Lorraine would they say, you know what, you guys look, you guys look like you need a simple blessing. I suggest here's what they would do, even if it right, wasn't real. Right. Suggest you call a a priest or an ordained member of the clergy of your religion. And uh, but he find out if they're religious first. A lot of mm -hmm. them said no. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you know, the only way you're going to solve this is by having a blessing of the home and a blessing of the people in the house. Well, that's, that would kind of satisfy them for, so they can get out. Right. Right. But right. well, usually <laughs> we do is we tell them, you know, these are the, these are the steps that you need to follow before we can actually come in here. We want to see that they're actually, you know, wanting to help and, and taking responsibility for themselves and taking those first steps, exactly. you know, and following our directions before we could go in there, even if we have to perform an investigation. Sometimes an investigation is really not needed. I mean, if you're just sitting there and you're talking to them, you get them to open, you, you could find out where this all started. Yeah. And then, you know, we could start the healing process from there. We we learned that early on. That's because, a big one. That's, right. big That's one. a Dan, big right. one. Dan, Dan kind of almost taught me that when he said to me, you got to get to the root, you know. And it's not just the physical things that are going on now. Why are they going on now? What happened to this family? Why is this person tormented? Something in their history? And then you dig deep. And you find out through talking to these people exactly what, not just the present phenomena, you know, yeah. why did it happen to this person? What did they do to create this? What kind of trauma happened in their lives, you know? And it could be generational, too. It sure could. A curse. Uh, and um, what I really look forward to is a, I find that 88% of the clients that I work with who have a situation, they don't want to get rid of it. They want to hold on to it. Say, they, they're hoping say, for that, that movie or a book or yeah, you told me that yesterday. It's, it's, that's that's key. But tell go ahead. Yeah, well, the, and then when I had one, for example, who was describing the phenomena and she was in a car, that's fine. We were doing Zoom during the uh COVID, but she stops at McDonald's and gets a milkshake while she no, 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 no. You're you're not in that pain. You're you're you don't have a, a desire to get rid of your situation and correct it. So you gotta you'll all, all of us at this table will see that and recognize that. What if you really truth right away? What if you really wanted that milkshake, though? I mean, really. Um, this is why he's. This is why sometimes, we love him. This is why you get a milkshake. Thanks, thanks, Chris. You know what? Or a donut. <laughs> yes, you got a donut. <laughs> yeah, a donut. Listen, there's some people already asking okay. questions. What kind of questions we got? Uh, here we go from uh, Damian Smith. Uh, do you feel Ed would have better success with today's technology, or would that be more of a I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I think he'd have restricted them. I think it may help, like an access. In other words, like when I was a police officer back in the seventies, we had mace. We didn't have pepper spray. We had mace. Mm -hmm. We had a nightstick. We didn't have a taser. So to help 
Didn't do his black job. Jack. He didn't have black jack. No, we had a black jack. <laughs> okay. He had a slap jack. Don't black lie. Jack. He had a black jack. So today, though, they have pepper spray, which is more effective, actually, than mace. And they have a taser, which nowadays I look online, I see people say, get out of the car, sir. The guy doesn't got to kind of tase him. We used to have to grab the guy, maybe take two or three cops to grab him and pull him out of the car. So, so their job is easier. We're not saying it's better, but it's easier. But remember that Ed had the best equipment going, and that was Lorraine Warren mm -hmm. because she was a psychic. So when Ed went into a house and people are blabbing fast and talking all nervous, and it would just look over to Lorraine and go, Lorraine, do you feel anything in here? And she would walk throughout the house. She'd come back and she'd talk to Ed privately. Ed, I don't feel anything in this house. Or, Ed, there's something very dark here. We have to investigate right. further. Right. So that was Ed's equipment. That was the best equipment you get. But to answer your question, it, Ed would like to use, probably use some of that equipment. I think he'd have fun with it. Do you, he'd think, do you think he'd use some of the electronic I, gadgets? I, I absolutely do, because Ed was always open to new stuff that would help him solve a case, you know? So just like the lie, the lie detector will help. Before the lie detector, you had to determine if the person was lying. You can hook up a lie detector now and know they're lying. So it's, it's, it's better now, you know. So the equipment today would help would have helped Ed. Uh, a sh short answer would be, yeah, I think he would go for, for more equipment. And Dan right. is our, our equipment guy. He he knows all those gadgets. Well, um, He's teaching me. He does, all the I know some equipment. I'm just I'm getting more familiar with it right now but um but you can't rely on guys you can't rely on total equipment. i hate carrying it but yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I hate it um, yeah, we go bare bones normally yeah. we go with a cassette recorder right. not even a digital a cassette recorder and we go with a flashlight a camera our cell phones and our brain because you glean the information by asking the, the correct questions by knowing if that it's a consistent answer just like uh, Chris would do, you'd separate the family members. Like if he was investigating a domestic, or something. you put the woman here and the guy there and you ask him separately. Because if you ask him together, the stories are always kind of similar. But you separate them and people will know that some, the woman might tell you something she wouldn't have said in front of her husband. Like, right. like yeah, something's been right. touching me in my private areas at night, but she didn't want to tell her husband that. But now you know because you separated her. Right, right. But what's good about investigating with Chris, because Chris is like the skeptic of the group. I, I believe, you know, working with him all these years, he looks at things differently than mm -hmm. what I will look at. I'm looking at a person and I'm trying to figure them out. Chris is actually looking outside the box and saying, uh, you know, something's not right. Or he'll pull me off to the side and he'll try to tell me, it's like, Dan, don't you think we should, you know, look yeah. at it this way? Yeah, and, probably, uh, that's probably, why we work well together. He probably observes more than an average person. He probably scan the room and well, go, "You see all those paranormal books over there? These people said they're not in the paranormal, but look over there because we might miss it." But he's always looking because cops—that's what they do, you know. Yeah. Right, right. Getting back to equipment, um, you know, it depends on what kind of investigation we're going on too. If we're do, doing somebody's house, we're not going to bring in, you know, uh, well, somebody's house where they're claiming that they have demonic activity we're not going to go in and with you know um i don't want to say spirit box but you know one of these other type try of, to talk to them try to just try, try to, to talk Satan. to a demon yeah we don't want uh, to talk to say you know we're not looking for evidence i mean we're looking for that something's happening there after interviewing somebody you know if something's happening there i don't we don't need the equipment right, right. um so you know us being kind of late into the equipment you know, we always kind of get yeah. I, we don't I, I jump right on things, right? I wouldn't use like a phasma box or anything like that. Right. But, you know, with a client, right, in the room, you know, and it's just that's gonna freak them out if they hear, you know, right, right, this weird voices yeah, right. and echoing yeah, and what's all that coming yeah. through there. I'm scared, you know, saying demon, Satan, you know, right. And you know, another thing to throw in here too is never challenge in a house. Never go to a house and start challenging. I've seen this happen on on some shows. Mm -hmm. And people, where they walk in and they start with, yeah, there's a demon here uh, to the family. And they don't even, they, they haven't been in the house for five minutes. And then they start, well, if there's a demon here, show yourself. Do something to me. If Don't ever do that. Don't ever challenge something to do something. Because they could. And it doesn't mean they're going to do it when you say to. Because remember this. A demon or a devil has the wisdom of the ages doesn't have to listen to a mere human being when it says, do something to me now. 
It can do something to you when it feels like it. It might be in a week. It might be in a month. It might be in a year. And it could be not to just you. It could be to a family member. But if you got in a car accident six months after you went into a house and challenged what was there, you're not going to think, oh, it's what I did six months ago that made me get this car accident. But that's what happens. You can't prove it. But why would you do it? Why would you open yourselves up to that? Don't. Because demons and devils, they're deceivers, they're liars, and they hate you because you are created in the image of God. That's a hated image to the demonic. Remember that. Everything that's happening in the world today, I believe, you don't have to believe me, but I believe is attacked, is influenced by demonic, by demonic entities. Right. So God is your friend. As far as I'm concerned, God is your protector. He's your suit of armor. All right, here's another good question. Sure. Well, I know this Damian Smith uh, is asking a lot of good questions here. Good. No, good. So um, how will you best help a family with a poltergeist activity that are not religious also needs help? So how will you help that family Yeah. with well, a poltergeist uh, yeah, well, activity? The thing is, here's, here's another thing that it's not every, not every time, but here's the thing. Uh, Ed used to say to me, he was right. I never met an atheist in a haunted house. So the people find God pretty quick. When they see objects moving on their own, when they sense a feeling of dread, a feeling of evil that you can't really describe unless you felt it, uh, when people are grabbed, their voices called out, cold spots in the house, some are being slapped, they immediately start to find God. They start, oh, my God, help me, help me. So when an investigator such as ourselves would go in and say, you know, you need a blessing, they'd be very open to that. Most people would, because it's something they never encountered before, Dan. It's right. Like, it's like, it's not like a burglary where, okay, I'll call the police and I'll, now I'll get locks for my house and I'll get an alarm. Now it's like, how do I get rid of this thing? And we say to them, well, a cop's not going to help you. We physically can't push it out of the house. We can do a, a simple blessing of the house. But you may need something more powerful, like a, a, an ordained member of the clergy to come and do it. And that's what we do. So so that's, we would, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So in other words, yeah, they may not be religious and they need help. We'll offer the help. If they don't take it, they don't take it. We can't make them. We can't make them get a blessing or follow our lead or pray at night like we ask them to do. So that's how we would handle it. There's only so much you can do with an unwilling participant. But if they're willing, there's a lot we can do. Yeah. Here's one more. Um, Author Mills says, Tony, why do most paranormal investigators run at first sight of paranormal experiences? Why run from everything they seek? Because they're they're not trained properly, perhaps. Uh, they have to be, they have to know in their heart of hearts that God is going to protect them if they ask God to. So a lot of these investigators are going in on a house. And a case, and they get scared immediately because, first of all, they never saw it before, which in a way you can't blame them. But number two is they don't have anything to fall back on. Like Chris would have a gun to fall back on if a guy came at him, right? But a demonic entity comes at somebody who's not religious. They don't know what to do, right? So you have to uh, you have to find God. You have to you have to know God is going to be your suit of armor and your protector. Right, right, and I, you know. When I first started doing this, like I wasn't really, you know, protecting myself. Right. And um, it came to like a certain investigation where I knew I needed something stronger. I needed faith. I needed God. Um, and uh, that helped me with the rest of my investigation, how I approached uh, the investigation. My eyes opened up. I Didn't mean, it give me strength knowing that? You have, you have a re protection in a form of an EFT. You guide. know, after throughout all the years, um, you know, it does break you down, and you do need that strength. And uh, you you gotta you have to back away from it. Um, and there's many times that I said uh, in the past, like you know, I, I can't do this somewhere. I, you know, I needed to mm -hmm. stop. Yeah, because things are happening. And you came back because you always wanted to help people. So yes. I needed to go to the church. I needed to rebuild my armor. That was my faith. That was my my armor. My protection was my faith. I mean, I need to be make sure that I'm 100 percent before I go out there and, and trying to help a client. Um, I, you know, I, you know, absolutely. I haven't been on an investigation recently that I was a one on one 
um, helping a client right. because um, I, I needed a break from that. Um, I'm going to get back into it. Um, it's just a matter of when I'm going to get back into it. I think uh, you have to find the right I, case. I've seen, I, I've seen a lot. Yeah. You, know, you got to find the right case, but I've seen a lot of stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen somebody that was possessed, you know, their eyes rolling behind their heads and um, yeah. speaking in different languages. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it does, it gets to you. And, it, and if it's a person that, you, you know, is a young child, you know, it affects you. Sure. You know, you know uh, we don't have enough belief in God in this country, I don't think. I mean, you know, God and country, they say. But I watched a video the other night, a YouTube video, just a guy in the street and he had a microphone and people were walking by, all different kinds of people, you know, young people, old people, women, men, uh, businessmen, housewives. They walk by and he says, do you believe in Jesus Christ? They walk by and they go like this. Not today. Not today. Uh, I'm not answering questions. You believe in Christ? Jesus Christ? No. Out of 20 people that walked by, one person said they believed in Jesus Christ. 19 said no. Yeah, I, I, here's one thing. Um, we got Adam. Like Adam Bacon? No, no, it's Adam, the cult member. Okay. Um, are you finding more paranormal, paranormal activity in the last 20 years? Do you see that the activity in testifying in the past 20 years? And, uh, yeah. you know, why do you think that? It goes in cycles, though. It goes in cycles. Go ahead. Wait, do you want to say I, something? Well, go, go ahead. I, I just want to caboose some. I have something else to add to that valid point. Go yeah, ahead. Well, there's an, increase in, there's an increase in cases because there's a decrease in the belief in God and, and, and praying to God for protection. So, and dabbling in occult practices and being a dysfunctional family and being heavy into drugs or alcohol, all of those things contribute to something evil trying to come into your life because... The weaker you are, the weaker willed you are, which alcohol will break down your will, drugs will break down your will, a non-belief in God, you have no protection. That's when the demonic comes. It says, I can get this soul. I can get this person to never, ever trust God because I'm going to do things to him. So, yes, there is an increase. I think the increase is uh, almost like self-inflicted. Self I know, but what's changed in, in the past 20 years? I mean... Uh, I'll, I'll add on to that. Go ahead, Wade. Um, go ahead. I've noticed that on cases that I work in, they've upped their game. Now, not to give recognition or acknowledgement, but they're using electronics. They're, they're, they're manipulating voices on the phone, leaving voicemails. This wasn't going on with Mr. Miss Warren back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they will add uh, text messages that are false. Uh, the demonic will try to uh, destroy a case or uh, act like the client saying, I don't need your help anymore. Uh, leave us alone. And uh, they've, they're they really tricky. They've really upped their game. Also, be aware of the media that they're going to be using now nowadays, especially in the past seven years. The video games aimed at young men to get violent and to go into society and shoot people up. Um, they're, they're going very deep and undercover in a current of society. Uh, it's not just moving chairs anymore. Um, they're going underneath silently and and they'll take their time. But that's what I've noticed in the yes, past I 10 agree. years. I agree. And you know what? A gentleman down in Florida, I'm not going to mention his name right now, but I might have him on as a guest. He was tormented for years by demonic entities that used to talk to him. And I, I know the man pretty well. And he's, he's, he's not making these stories up. This really happened to him. These entities really did speak to him. And you know what they told him at one point in his, in his 50 year ordeal with these entities? They told him, we, we, who do you think helped you create technology? Because you're going to destroy yourselves. That's what, that's what this entity was saying to this man. You're, you're going to destroy yourselves by the technology we've given you. And I believe it. I that's believe true. Because... Social media is killing everything. It's, killing, it's, it's making people hate each other. It's making people vicious and mean and rotten to people that they used to like. I mean, if you say one thing wrong in here and people will attack the heck out of you. I mean, just, 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 so I, I think it's demonically influenced. Just think of four years to now. That's all enhanced and changed. It's amazing. Yeah, but, I, you know, I think it's like... Um, we lost our foundation. We lost our values, um, especially with the younger generation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they don't have, I think, I think that we didn't, you know, we didn't spend enough time. Now we're too busy in our own lives 
you know, we have our kids and everything, but you don't spend time with your kids. It's a slow you know, and they get lost to society. They get lost to social media and everything. It's and, just, you know, it creates chaos. And I think in chaos, you know, everybody gets drawn into it, you know, and you become weak. And that's how the demonic likes it. It likes it when you're weak, right? right. And it tries to infiltrate. You know, if, if, so, I, if I make a comment on here on Facebook and I say, I hate such and such, or I hate, just somebody will jump on and go, yeah, me too. Because misery loves company, it seems to me. It seems they, they, <clears throat> like, to, they like to like say negative things, makes them feel powerful maybe. But it's all the culture, like Dan said, over the years, you know, even back when I went to college, way back when, the professors were very, very liberal even back then. And in schools today, I mean, you know, I asked when I was in Taekwondo class, I asked one of the kids, I said, who discovered America? He looked at me and he goes, and not, I was taught Columbus, right? Discovered right, America. Right. He goes, oh, the Vikings. I said, what? He's like, how about Columbus? And he went to this long, this kid about 11 years old, yeah, yeah. this long thing about, no, it wasn't Columbus. And the reason is why it was, it was the Vikings and this and that. They're teaching these kids and they're tearing down statues. They're tearing, trying to change history. All that affects people. Like, and when I walk into a place, now I'm, I'm old. I walk into a place, I hold the door for the kid. I hold the door for, and the kid doesn't even say thanks. Or he'll, he'll, he'll slam the door in my face when I try to get in without holding it for me. I mean, what is that about? So something, Dan is right, something in the culture has drastically changed Maybe it's the way it's supposed to be because the end is near. I don't know if the end is near or not. Well, we but had that earthquake, so we, we had the earthquake, <laughs> we had, which which we had. That had Liberty got struck by lightning we uh, had, yesterday. We really, kind of, we, oh, had, yeah. we well, have this kind of earthquake. Satchel Satchel Liberty East. got struck by lightning. Okay. Oh yeah, I saw that yeah. picture I didn't too. Hear about that. I'm telling you guys, there's something going on in this in the world that's that's different than it was like even ten years ago. Well, let's just say really, let's so, let's just say it's not hiding anymore. It's out in the open. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they're doing this right in front of you. You know, yeah, and, it, the, and the, we could go deeper into it. You know, there's yeah. a Bible passage that I always quote you guys, and you've heard it a thousand times. Isaiah, I think it's five twenty. It's woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who call bitter sweet and sweet bitter. And that's exactly what's happening today. People are calling stuff that's good. They're calling it bad. Something that's good and bad, they're calling it good, right? Like, you know, when I was a cop, it wasn't as bad being a cop even back in the 70s than it is now. I mean, if you talk to Chris, people giving him the finger and stuff while he's while he's on a road job directing traffic. That's all right. Right? It's all good. You know, it's not all good because people are just crazy today. It's a consciousness, and it's unfortunately society's consciousness is, is ripe for vulnerability with the demonic and dark side. They're not. Society's not thinking about fighting it. No, they got full reign, and I don't want to scare anyone. But all I'm saying is that you protect yourself, have a foundation, um, and um, hopefully you'll never use it. But if you do, we're here. But well, here's the thing: it's like, okay, how do we do that? How do we change it? How do we protect ourselves from that? You know, I mean, yeah. we're at a point right now. Oh, how do we, as a society? You know, as a society, we need to choose a path, right? Are you just going to keep following what's happening now or I, I think to, to, to look, you know, to do better and climb that mountain, which is hard to do. Right. And change the way things are today. How do we do that? Well, let me ask you this society. Why, why society do you want to change? Do you even know that there's a vulnerability now? Most people like we're in the paranormal. We think of it every 10 minutes. The average per American thinks of paranormal, uh, maybe a movie a year, uh, five, thoughts a year so they're not thinking on that ground and level we are but my point not, neither is good or bad but my point is it, it's society is very vulnerable right now and and um i don't think they're too prepared for what's coming okay so what about all these like ufo sightings yeah i know like the florida uh, the, the mall in florida right you see how that was covered up do you know. believe that that really happened over there do i believe it yeah yeah, I believe something has happened now, but I don't know what. I mean, I'm not sure why. What, you don't believe it? Oh, no, I believe it. I mean, I've seen. I believe that there was aliens there, but they I believe something up. happened. I just, I don't know what. You know, I, I hate I to be. What. I'm, I'm not going like to say they're aliens, know. but something happened. Something and, happened. and the government covered. But it. why does it seem like it's every 20, 
22 years that all of a sudden these sightings start appearing. Right? I didn't know that answer. We're at a time right now, it's like 20 years. So when I, I experienced a UFO sighting, this is probably around 1980 or 81. All right. 20 years later, in 2000, there were more UFO sightings right. than it dissipates. Right? Yeah. Come 2022, 2024, there's more UFO sightings. It seems like it's a cycle. Yeah, it's probably a cycle, but you know, and you know what? There's more because of social media that we're seeing. Is it, it aliens? Is it demonic? Are they all the I same? Don't, I don't know. You know, what are that's, we what are we looking at? What are we I seeing? I, I don't know. But you know what? When people say, Oh, if there are aliens and it blows up religion, no, it doesn't. It doesn't blow up God or religion because what did they say at the beginning of the Bible? In it's the all, beginning, God created the, the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Because he didn't specifically mention on such and such a planet there are these kind of creatures, it doesn't mean they're not there. He, we didn't know all about all these stars until the telescopes, right? We didn't know how big the universe was back then. So when people say that to me, so he created everything, including if there are aliens, including aliens. Do you do you ever think that maybe um, a planet out there is not doing too well consciously, and Jesus Christ came to them too? In a life? So is it, is it so all this is happening today? Is this like a diversion of really us happening. losing yeah. um faith in Christ and God, right? He's so we're back. focusing too much on this, yeah. right? Is yeah. that what the demonic wants us to do? They're distracting us. Just, like look over here, yeah. Look over there. Yeah, look over. I believe this is just my opinion that God is coming back soon. Uh, how soon nobody really knows. There's a lot of people say, Well, on the eighth of April and the when the solar eclipse is, because there's also a, a, a devil comet at the same time, and all these other conspiracy theories. I don't know about any of that if it's real or not real. We'll see on Monday, but because you know, some of us may not be here, who knows? But um, I say, if you believe in God, now's the, and you or don't believe in God, now's the time to start believing, because when the time really happens, when He really comes back, He's not taking the people who don't believe. You have to believe that He. An entity that created everything. And, and if you've, sorry, Tony. And he did. If you've got a situation in your home with a demonic and say we come in and we cleanse the place and we leave that night and all hell breaks loose, mm -hmm. that often tells the client, oh my gosh, I better not have Nesper in my house again because look what the heck happened. I'm not doing that again. You see how the demonic has, has flipped the situation mentally? Right. And emotionally, right. so right. that ties into what you and Dan were saying right. as as far as how they're working now. Right, but we're smarter than that because we would tell them right that your your problems may decrease and go away, or they may increase. And it's just like when you someone has cancer and they cut out the tumor, right? And then, the, but the doctor says, just in case we're gonna in case we didn't get it all, we're gonna give you chemo. It's a process, right? They give them chemo for weeks and weeks. And then after that, maybe they give them radiation to try to really knock it down and kill it. Same thing with a demonic entity. If it was that easy to get rid of a demonic entity, in other words, calling in Nesper, and we come in and we say a simple blessing, if it was that easy, you wouldn't need an exorcist. You wouldn't need, no. the, you wouldn't need exorcisms. You wouldn't need any of this stuff. No. It'd be so simple. It, they wouldn't even have to call us in. They'd do it themselves. Well, it's not even that easy. I mean, you go into somebody that's inflicted with a demonic presence, right? That's their attachment, right? Yeah, yeah. So we could go in there, we could do a blessing and everything, pray over them. But if they're not willing mm -hmm. to accept that help or accept, so true, so true. you know, that faith that we were implementing, you know, to them, because they said they're Catholic, right? But they're not following the steps. Yeah. They're not helping. So anything that we're doing is really not helping because they're not willing to take responsibilities. Exactly. For himself, it's like it's so. Like, now we're putting ourselves in danger. That's what, yeah, Absolutely. that's what I was talking about earlier. About it's 88 like, percent, they don't want to get rid of it. It's like if I had a heart attack and I go to the doctor, you say, Well, you can live a long life, but you got to quit smoking, you got to quit drinking, you have to exercise, and you have to really watch what you're eating. Don't eat a lot of red meat, don't do any of that stuff, okay? And don't stress out about stuff. And I don't, I walk out, yeah, doc, you're right. I go out, light a cigarette up, go to a bar, have a drink, never exercise. Have a big fatty cheeseburger. God helps those who help themselves. 
you can give them the instruction, but if they don't follow it, if they don't follow it, then it's, and it's it, on them. And here's the other thing, too. And it doesn't have to be through the Catholic faith. No. A lot of people think that we go, we're going in there, we're pushing the Catholic faith. No, it's your religion. What's your, and then that's the first question I ask. What religion are you practicing? You know, because right. then I can help you through that religion. Or maybe it's a religion that, you know, we might not agree on. Maybe, you know, try this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you need to know who God is. You know, Absolutely. you need to know who Jesus is. If, if, if you believe in Jesus, right, you need to know who they are. You got to accept them into your heart. So maybe the Catholic religion is not for you because maybe you really don't understand all the rules and, you know, the whole process of it. So maybe, you know, a Baptist church or a Protestant church, whatever is going to work for them. It's, it's going to bring you towards God. It's going to bring you closer. You're, we're teaching them. Right. right. So. When people ask us, oh, yeah, how do you help a person just through the Catholic faith? Well, the Catholic faith is my armor. Is that's my faith. That's my approach. That works for you. That works for me. Right. right. But I have Christ in my heart. Yes. So Catholic faith, as you call it, is just a title. It's in my heart what matters. Yes, absolutely. Right. And God knows your heart, too. Yes. God knows your heart. So I'm just trying to help you guys understand that as well. Any questions? Any more questions? Or I have a quick go ahead, Dan, but I have a quick thing to throw at go you. Ahead. Ahead. Um, if if we start going in on a case and activity has been, say, for two weeks mm -hmm. versus two years, mm -hmm. it's easier to eradicate the situation of the demonic on the two weeks period, correct? As opposed to well, letting maybe, it maybe it didn't get a big foothold. Yeah, I was gonna say let it get its claws in on right. the family. If you let it get a foothold, then it's oh, of course it's hard to dig it out. You, you know, there's a guy, out. there's a guy on here, uh Nordic uh warrior game. Okay. Yep. He's actually uh what we're talking about, he's commenting exactly what we're talking about. Um I think that's pretty cool. What do you mean? Saying the same kind of thing? Oh, yeah. He's saying pretty much probably, roughly around the same kind of thing that what we're, what we're saying. And there's a lot of people out there that um you know, like Tony has said before, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, no, we know don't. what's in their heart. We know what was, you know, what we learned and what you learned from Ed and Rain. And we're always learning. You know, we're there's always, always learning. To, there's always more to know. <laughs> uh, the God always, I'm God, uh, Ed always used to say, we're not meant to know all the answers. And that's part of the mystery of the universe. Because if anybody ever tells you that they know it all, don't listen to them. Hey, and here's the guy, Chris Mack. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Hey, Chris. When a person is possessed, is it possible for people to lose their memory? Uh, their memory. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So a lot of times, people who are not a lot of times, almost all of, every time, a person who's possessed doesn't know they're possessed. They come under possession. It's like you ever see like a hypnotist when he hypnotizes somebody, and he snaps his finger, and they come out. They don't remember anything they did. The same thing when you're possessed, and you're not possessed all the time. It's, it's an in and out thing. They can come in and, and overtake your body and stuff. There, but a lot of times you'll be possessed. You don't know what you did. You get in crawling up the wall, swearing, talking in tongues, and don't remember a thing. Yeah, that's true. Right. I mean, look at Ar Arnie. Yeah, it's just thinking of that. Yeah. Right. Arnie Johnson. Um, another thing is uh, I'm trying to think of uh, some of the other things I want to let people know about as far as protection. Um, you should always... When you go into a house to investigate a, a house, we don't take people in with us as investigators unless they do believe in a higher power, unless they do believe in God, because they're opening themselves up to a lot of danger. It's like Chris, you know, I hate to keep bringing Chris up as a cop, but he walks in a house where he knows there's a barricaded suspect with a shotgun or, or a revolver, and he says, well, I'm not going to wear my vest today because it's too hot out. So I just go in there and I didn't even check my gun, but I guess it's still loaded. I didn't look at it. He walks in and the guy points a gun at him. And Chris is like, hey, wait a minute. And he, he doesn't have a vest on. He pulls his gun out, jams because he didn't check it. And the guy shoots him in the chest because he doesn't have the armor of protection. The armor of protection in a haunted location is God. When you say, I believe in God, and you close your eyes and envision the a white light all around your, your aura, all around mm -hmm. your body is protection. <clears throat> and ask God to protect you from anything evil or demonic or otherworldly or negative entities, and he will. That's your suit of armor like Chris would put on his vest. So when somebody comes under possession, right, mm -hmm. the demonic is using 
their body as a vessel. Correct. As a way of communicating. Manipulating, around manipulating them, right? their larynx. Everything. So they can't retain, that person that comes possessed can't retain those memories because right. it's no longer their vessel. The demonic's so powerful that it, it, yeah. it, where where does my spirit go? If say for instance, I, I become possessed. I mean it's just just throw out there. Where does my spirit go? If something else took over my body, is that spirit? I think, I think it cohabitates the spirit. A lot of people say the spirit leaves and stands next to it. I don't believe in that. I believe that in your spirit is still there, but it's almost like it, it almost like paralyzes your spirit because it goes in and it takes over. But what is the demonic? I mean. As we, I, I know, I'm asking you this question. We know that the devils, demons, right? God created it all. Everything, yeah. Right? Everything. Devils and demons, how old are they? Ancient, Ancient right? Yeah. To, to the, the beginning age. of time. Because God age. created the angels before he created us. That's correct. Right? That's so correct. the fallen angels, right? Yes. Been around since the beginning. Even and before then, and they're very smart, right? Yes. Very intelligent, right? Yeah. They have, they have the gift of God, the knowledge of God, right? Because God and they cannot be destroyed, ever. And that's how easily we could get manipulated by these demons, they right? Can, they can deceive. They could. They can, they're liars. They're out and out liars. Number one, and they're deceivers, and they they like nothing more than to you to fail, and to you to fail in everything you do. They love it because, or oh, and to go away from God because they figure you go away from God and don't believe in Him anymore, you'll never get into heaven. And, and they're right, you won't. If you don't believe in the, the uh, Almighty, mother, just hang it up. I mean, you guys can think whatever you want out there. You can say, "Oh, he's full of shit." There are no such thing as ghosts and devils and demons. There's no God. They can believe anything they want. I'm not going to try to convince them, and I don't think any of us are going to convince. Try to convince them that they're, you almost have to just know it instinctively. Like, like, you know, Wade, you know, like instinctively, if you went into a store tomorrow, even when you were a kid and you took something, you know it's wrong. If you went and slapped a woman in the face right now, you know it's wrong. You stole her purse. Stole her purse, you know it's wrong, right? Right. So you instinctively know things are wrong to hurt other people. Where did that instinctual come in? When you see a cat, when a new kitten is born and you're licking an order, are you kneading their paws in your chest? Where does that come from? That's instinct. Right. That's instinct, right? So we all have this thing built into us that we know right from wrong. I was going to use the word in your soul, you in know. In your soul. You know what's right and what's not right. You got that guilt feeling. Why do we even have guilt then if there's no right and wrong? If there's no God, right, then there's no right and wrong. Because then everything is just there. Like, why is it wrong to steal? Why is it wrong to hurt somebody and beat them up? Why is it wrong to do these things or kill someone? Why do we think it's in our heart of hearts we know it's wrong? Because God gave us that into our hearts. He He made us that way. That, you know, uh, if we were just a bunch of cells put together, right, uh, as a random event, like an evolutionary event, I mean, no thought process or involved. But why is anything right or wrong, right? Well, it's your consciousness. And that creates a uh, vibration outside of your body. I'm not just talking about your auric field, but um, uh, society as a whole creates a vibration from Earth. That's why the extraterrestrials come here often or not so often. Or when we're dealing with nuclear activity in, in plants, they'll come more often. That It's a consciousness awareness. But the same thing. They? What are they? Are they, are they? you know, are they from God? Devils from God? Are they? I, 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 look, I'm not an authority on that, but but I would believe that God is that talented to make other people and other planets and have the ability to visit each other. Although I, I don't know whether that's planned or not. There's too many reports out there. No, right? yeah, I well, too many reports out about aliens and about we, UFOs. We're not going to talk about it now, but you know. What I saw at one time. Oh, know. we know that. I mean, I, you know, I can't we'll, deny what I saw. Right, I believe right. It. We'll talk one day about it, but not you, now. You heard, you, you heard, you guys know in the audience who Bob Lazar is. Right. He's the guy that was at Area 51 as a nuclear physicist back way back in the like, maybe 70s or 80s. And the things he recounted that he saw there, when you listen to this guy talk, you know he's not making it up. His story has never changed over all the years. Like 40 years, his, his, his story has never changed. But did you know that 
He graduated from college and the government went in and wiped out all his academic records. So, he, so he'll say, I went to this such and such a college as a nuclear physicist. They, he can't prove it. He's got the diploma home, but he can't. They took all the transcripts and they deleted them all. So what is that about? The government is hiding a lot of things. The government is hiding a lot of things. Maybe they figure that we get nervous or scared or panicky. Yeah, yeah, why? I don't know I what mean, they think. They, I guess they don't trust the American people to, to have common sense or something. Right. But well, listen, guys, let, um, I hate to cut you guys off. We got it. about nine minutes left. And um, Any questions or anything from people? Or yeah, but I, I want to start. I want to let people know the about the Paracon. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, can uh, you just fill us in a little bit? about Paracon. what's going on in Gettysburg. Who the, who the guests may be, some of the guests. Sure. Uh, let's see. It's September 27th. That's the VIP party. I'm all out of breath. I just ran downstairs. What's wrong? Huh? You're going up and down the stairs. You all right? No. No, I have to chase some people off the property. You did? Yeah. It's all good. All right. Uh, but by the way, someone is here 24 hours and right. not yeah. a good idea. Until it's a little tied up now, so we didn't see him out there. Let's just say yeah, that. You know. Yes. So. so I snuck up on him and... And uh, they're gone. But uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, just somebody, somebody, somebody was outside. Uh, let's see. The Paracon. Yeah, the Warren Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon. It's uh, coming the 27th through the 29th yes. of uh, September. Uh, we got a VIP party on Friday. There's going to be uh, – uh, everybody's going to be there. <laughs> Everybody – Who's Who's anybody? Anybody is going to be there. Like who? Uh, let's see. We're going to have um, who's Jim? Steve Gonzalez. Yeah. Steve uh, Gonzalez. Sorry, uh, from Ghost Hunters. Yeah. Um, Ryan Buell. Bieber. Ryan Buell is going to be there. Chad. Paranormal Estate. Chad Selleck. Mm -hmm. I'm out of breath still. Jim Beaver. Uh, Jim Beaver. Now, who's Jim Beavers? Jim Beaver. Beaver. No, Beaver. From uh, Supernatural. You guys know him as Bobby. TV show. From the TV show Supernatural. That's a big one. We're excited to how have about, him. How about the nun? Um, yeah. The nun is going to be there. Bonnie Aarons. Uh, Bonnie Aarons. Uh, we're really excited. We've been trying to get her for a couple of years now and just our schedules have it. So we finally got her. She's coming out. That's really cool. Um, Speak you know, you know, Michael, uh, what's his name from uh, The Hills Have Berryman. Eyes? Mer Berryman. Berryman. Uh, Berryman. Berryman. Yeah, that's uh, that's really exciting. He's a horror icon. So yeah, I know. He that's, gonna like be, that that's gonna be really cool. And there's a couple more that we that have been. Um, we just to get signed. You know, signed just get the contract signed. We're yeah. gonna be announcing them. And where's it gonna be? At? Soon. Where's it gonna be? That's gonna be in Gettysburg at the All Star Event Center. Uh, okay, and how do they get tickets? So, and information. And you can go on Nesper Ticket Spice dot com dot com slash. Slash Warren's yeah. Paracon. We'll have the link on our uh, or just our sites. And, and, and also, we'll put the link on there for ticket sales. But you can also go to Warren's.net, and there's a link on our website that you could purchase the tickets through that link on our website. So right. Warren's.net. That's a little bit easier to remember what without effect? posting a link what right now. We yes, doing? we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have items from the Warren Occult Museum that you can't see anywhere else, including uh, the Annabelle, including the real, the real. Annabelle doll. People um, ask us why we bring it out. Ed used to tell me that you have to have evidence. He goes, it wouldn't, how would I look, he said to me one time, if I tell people all about the Annabelle doll, what, how dangerous it is, and how it was possessed, and people go, well, where is it? And I said, well, I threw it out. He said, you know, it's just like a picture is worth a thousand words. If they can see it, it's easier to believe the story and, and know right. about the story. So the Annabelle doll will be there. The movie Annabelle Dow will be there. Right. The Shadow Dow will be there. The Satanic Idol will be there. Satanic Skull will be there. And other things too, right? Other We're, we're going to have a bunch of other things. A lot of different things uh, than what we had last we year. we got about, what, 100 vendors maybe? How many, 90? There'll probably be about 100. 100, 100 vendors. vendors. All the all those all those uh, uh, celebrities are going to be there all weekend, including the VIP party. Um, a lot so, of the speakers? So all the speakers. Oh, the yeah, there's going to be speakers. Celebrities are going to uh, be there. We're going to get some food trucks. I mean, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. And we got wife, some other surprises. My wife will up. be there, which is which is Ed Lorraine's daughter, Judy. She'll oh, Judy's there. coming. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm trying to still get her there because her, her knees are really bothering uh, her a lot. Courtney just put the so, so, so she may not be there, but at this point, I'm trying to get her there. Let's put it that I'm trying to get her there. Yeah. Courtney just put the ticket link on. Oh, so he did. The chat did? Room. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. 
Courtney, Courtney, thank you. Right, and don't forget, we we also have the uh, Devils on the Run tour. Yeah, um, we got the one coming up in San Antonio. That's uh, the middle of uh, May. May at the Black Swan Inn. At the Black Swan. How do you get tickets for the Missouri? Now we're traveling. What is it? Two thousand five hundred miles to get down there. You're driving yeah. with yeah, all whatever, these haunted whatever. items in back of a van. Thanks, Dan. Uh, the Missouri um, State one. How do we? How do we find out about that? Uh, that so one's right? that one. We're gonna post a link for that too. If uh, that Missouri State, I heard that's a huge penitentiary. Is right. That true? I mean, gigantic. I, I don't know. I've never been there, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've, I've heard Rob told us it was right. And this is Rob. Rob is running this. We'll get haunted, you know, and Sarah. Right. Um, you can find the links to there. So they're doing this uh, this year with us. You know, the Devils on the Run tour. Um, they booked a couple of locations for us. We already did the Shanley. Everybody yeah, had a great that was time. Good. That was good. Everybody that was good. loved talking that to was, you, Tony. That was fun. That was our oh, yeah. first one. A lot of people, a lot of great comments. Um, really? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, either. how you took the time out to talk to them. And, uh, oh, well, I try. I mean, sometimes I'm tired. Boring. Or bored. Or like boring. Tonight. I'm bored. Yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm a little tired tonight. <laughs> not that tired. Not that. I'm old, um, but I'm not that tired. But great precaution is taken transporting the items. Great care. That's a topic all on its own. But um, they're they're uh, dormant, they're asleep, they're literally protected, and um, it's it's a fascinating procedure. But um, yeah, we do this for you. You're the ones who you know make this exciting and and can change an investigation. A person who's never been on an investigation is the one we we enjoy the most. Um, so everyone brings their own energy, their own consciousness to an investigation. And that can trigger and spur activity. Uh, that's what's so fascinating about this. Ed used to tell me all the time about spreading the word. You know what he'd be how he'd be spreading that word today? He'd be on this podcast for three, four hours. You know, he loved to talk about helping people. He, he, he used to like to spread the word about the demonic, how right. bad it is, how you don't challenge, and how bad they, how bad it is in the world today. He would he would be so upset today at some of the stuff that's going on. In the world, you know, in the whole world. You know, he was a World War II mm -hmm. uh, Navy veteran. And uh, he told me some stories about how he almost died over there. And I just keep thinking about, I guess he was meant to do this. Because he was, he got in a crash with another, with a tanker on his ship in the North Atlantic. February 5th, it was freezing out. And he almost got eaten up by sharks and everything else. Yeah. So it's like crazy. What, what are you going to say? No, that's good. I'm sorry to interrupt you because that's a great story. No, we'll just, somebody just time. somebody just we'll keep that for another podcast. Yeah. We'll talk. There's some great stories. So Samantha's saying this podcast is everything I needed, and everything. Really? Uh, yeah, I think that was pretty cool. Thanks, Samantha. Oh, thank you, Samantha. We're, we're, I know we're almost out of time, but I think we are gonna how we're gonna end it is is if you guys can just be kind to one person in your in your doings tomorrow. It's almost like a ripple effect throughout the world. Like when you throw a when you throw a, a stone into a pond, you see it rippling out like this all around, rippling out. That one act of kindness might make somebody's day, and then they go out and are kind to someone else. And it, it's like a ripple effect. The more kindness we could spread, just like what Mother Teresa said, if you can't feed a hundred people, then just feed one. So just help out one person. And that might even be letting somebody get in front of you in the grocery line. Don't you feel better when you do a little something for someone? So my thing is for everyone out there is, first of all, thank you very much for tuning in to us tonight. We're very happy to have you. And we consider all of you as people who humbly, we humbly are happy that you're with us. I want to just end this with to say to you, Dan, and to Chris, and to Wade, be kind. Be kind to one another. We'll continue this next Friday. When we'll, I'll start out with the Ed Warren Navy when he went over, overboard. Yeah. But uh, any last words for anyone else? Um, no, here. Is it every other Friday? Every other Friday. Every other Friday. Okay. So, Tony, take it out as, you know, my name is Tony Spira. And so, for, the supernatural. for Dan Rivera, Chris Galoran, Wade Kirby, and me, Tony Spera, we wish you a very good, good night.